The Radio Forest Podcast. Hi, this is Carlos. How are you? I'm doing so good. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. Thank you. You're coming to Boise, Idaho, March 26th in support of the new album, Blessings and Miracles. And before we start, can I just apologize to you? Now, I talked to your wife a few years ago, and she said you'd be fine with this. But about four years ago, you and I were supposed to talk, and I canceled the interview. My newborn son at the time had a doctor's appointment, and I decided to cancel and go with my wife because when you have kids, as a man, there's not really anything that you can do, right? It's all about the mom and the baby. And I really thought, like, I should be there. And your wife was like, he totally would understand that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, what we can do is support, you know, uh, sometimes just being next to the person uh, quietly with your eyes focusing on love, you know, this support system. Yeah, and you're a big supporter of kids. I know you've got your own school. What was it about your education that made you decide that something's missing and you needed the Carlos Santana Arts Academy? Children need to know that it works, unity and harmony and what children have naturally anyway, which is purity and innocence, that's going to work. That's going to be the glue, you know, to keep the world together. So for me to promote music that sound resonance vibration, that transmits a frequency of love and harmony and peace and light and joy, that's what's happening. You sound pretty spiritual, and I've got a little bit of a connection between you and John Coltrane. And let me know if you see this too. You both are these huge, successful, inspirational musicians, and both have had like a major spiritual awakening. Do you feel any sort of connection to John Coltrane in that aspect? Oh, yes, absolutely. The mission and the vision is the same. Every musician that I know plays music to wake people up gently to their own awakening of awareness beyond religion and politics, beyond the fear of hundreds of years of being programmed to make you believe, deceive you, that you're not worthy of your own light, that only Jesus or somebody else has light in your chopped liver. For me, music immediately awakens people to their own divinity, their own totality. John Coltrane, John Lee Hooker, John Lennon, Bob Marley, Bob Dylan, we know who they are and we know why they are who they are. You've got a brand new album out now, The Blessings and Miracles. You've got quite a collection of different artists on this. You've got country stars and rappers, pop stars, and also metal. For the second time on a Santana album, you've got Kirk Hammett from Metallica. Now, I know some of this was recorded in different locations, but is there any chance that Kirk brought that Peter Green 1959 Les Paul guitar? (laughs) Yes, he did. He let me touch it, too. I miss it. I used to touch it a lot. Peter Green used to come and visit us a lot in 1970 and 71. He would just show up at the gigs and bring the guitar and he let me touch it, you know, that supernatural guitar. So yes, very grateful. Marcos Aguera and Kirk Hammett, they sounded incredible on America for Sale. Yeah, and I guess Steven Tyler was the first call, so the Death Angel angle, that came from Kirk Hammett himself? Yes, yes. I tried to call Steven Tyler and also Lenny Kravitz for a couple of other things, but they were busy doing their own thing and they couldn't make it because of the COVID. I asked Kirk Hammett if he knew someone who could do this thing, and he said, yes, my, my good friend Marcos Aguera. So that was perfect. Going back to Peter Green real quick, what did he think of your version of Black Magic Woman? Did you guys ever talk about it or did he give you any feedback? No, but I, I believe he liked it, you know. The whole world like it. Why, why wouldn't he like it? The checks that kept coming in, you know, the royalty <laughs> checks, he can help a lot of people in his own family with it. Also on this album, you've got a version of Whiter Shade of Pale. Has your feelings and your thoughts about the song changed now that Gary Brooker had just passed away? Are you looking at that song in a different way? Well, according to my sisters, my four sisters, My mother used to play that song a lot because that's when I left the house and I started living in the streets. And so every time my mom would hear that song, you know, she would think of me and she would cry, you know. So that song has a special meaning for me about my mom. But I feel really grateful that uh, my request was fulfilled. I asked Stevie Winwood if he would sing it. I said, you know, I hear you singing this song, but I want to do it more African, Cuban, Puerto Rican, sexy, Guajira. 
And he goes, okay. So we tried it with Leonardo Michael Walden, put it together. And, you know, that, that song is what it is. But at the same time, what we did to it now is very sexy. See, we went with it. It's incredible. I wish I could do a whole album and another tour with him. You do have on the album also your son, your daughter, your wife on drums. And you'd mentioned Lenny Kravitz before. She played with Lenny Kravitz on the drum kit. With your family so close with you at home and also on the album and then touring, does Carlos Santana ever need alone time or are you the opposite? Do you get recharged by always being around people? That's a great question. I don't need to escape, run away, or hide from anybody. Like most people, sometimes I do need just a little bit of time to meditate and be quiet. I find there's enough time to do everything that you need to do, especially when you take a deep breath stand back, slow it down, and then you're able to connect with anything and everything except fear. Have you been in touch with Bob Dylan, or when's the last time you've talked to him or you guys' paths have crossed? It's been a while. Thank you for mentioning Bob. Coltrane and Miles and Bob Dylan, they're my heroes. Bob Dylan, when he wrote songs like Blowing in the Wind, and everybody was singing it from Sam Cooke to Stevie Wonder, I mean... There's a reason why Bob Dylan is the person who ignited the 60s. I mean, he changed the Beatles single-handedly. When the Beatles came to see Bob Dylan at the Auburn Hall, they were never the same. They went from a boy band, you know, kind of like a, a pop band, which is nothing wrong with that. But they, all of a sudden, their music started singing like, Michelle Mabel, and then Robert Saul. And most of the songs, they sounded like Bob Dylan singing them. There's a lot of power in Bob Dylan. He is and will always be Jimi Hendrix's favorite musician. That's why he did uh, All Along the Watchtower. To me, Bob Dylan's like magical, right? Oh, yeah. The best way to describe Bob Dylan is that he's bigger than life and he transcends all generations. Let me jump back real quick to Kirk Hammett. We're talking about, of course, the new Carlos Santana album, Blessings and Miracles. He's got his friend Rob Thomas back on. That's great to see you two back together. But I know, in talking about the Peter Green 59 Les Paul guitar from Fleetwood Mac that Kirk Hammett owns, Kirk Hammett has his own flavor of coffee named after that guitar, and you have your own coffee company. Have you guys ever sat down and either shared coffee or talked about meeting up together with your brands and coffees? No, not yet. First, we have to agree on the weed, you know, what we're going to smoke first. (laughs) (laughs) What about your own brand of weed? That's not a bad idea, you know. There's a... There's a lot of places now and a lot of celebrities that are kind of cashing in and using their name. You could do that. Yes. You know, all of these enterprises are helpful to help bring fresh, pure, clean water to Indian reservations and to bring clothes to Africa, shoes. All of these enterprises that we musicians are able to endorse, they help us help the world. It's really energy going back to energy. Carlos, thank you so much. I could talk to you for 100 hours. March 26th, (laughs) you're in Boise. It's been a couple of years. I think the last time you were at the Idaho Botanical Garden, but you're inside now, Extra Mile Arena. New album out now. Again, Rob Thomas and G-Eazy and Steve Winwood and Kirk Hammett and the lead singer from Death Angel all appear on the new one out now, Blessings and Miracles. Have a blessed day, Carlos. Thank you for your inspiration. Stay precious. Bye-bye.